Welcome to When Laid Off, Paid Off, Redundancy Success Stories. Coming up in this episode. I knew that I was good at my job, but I was naive about what I could do outside of that box. It's crucial stuff, isn't it? And yet we call it sort of like soft skills. Welcome to When Laid Off, Paid Off, the show about providing inspiring stories and lessons to find the silver lining if you're struggling with the challenges and uncertainty of redundancy. I'm Liu Batchelor, and I'm a presenter, producer, and TEDx curator. And I'm on a mission to help people share their purpose and their passion so that they can find and do the work they love. This episode is brought to you in partnership with Another Door. This episode comes from independent clinical laboratory consultant Anne Truick, who found herself pushed out of her role when a new management structure got introduced. As a result, she learned her true value and how to work less hours for more money. Later in the show, we'll also hear from Eleanor Tweddle, redundancy mentor at Another Door and author of why losing your job could be the best thing that ever happened to you. He'll be sharing with us her insight in how to understand and sell your soft skills to maximize your value. But first, let's hear Anne's story. When I decided to jump, I was close to the age for early retirement. So the risk was relatively low for me and not working was way better than working for an organization I had no respect for. My sanity is important to me and I would have gone mad if I'd stayed working there. I was laboratory director of an NHS pathology lab. I had a large team and a large budget, and it was a job I'd loved for 35 years. But then the lab was taken over by a private company. I had no say in the matter, and due to my seniority, there was no role for me in the new organisation. So I negotiated a settlement agreement. This was similar to redundancy, but without going through the lengthy procedure, which can be emotionally draining. And then, with my newfound freedom and my settlement payoff, I decided to take a gap year to reevaluate the things that are important to me. Well, during my gap year, I got in touch with a couple of colleagues from the old days. And because of that, I'm now doing something I never thought I'd ever be doing. I'm an independent management consultant and strategic advisor to a laboratory in Bangkok, although currently working remotely due to COVID travel restrictions. I did feel quite guilty and sad when I left my friends and colleagues behind in the old job while I got out, but they understood why I had to leave and they are still great friends. As part of the settlement agreement, I insisted on a particular staff assistance program. I heard about this program from a friend. It sounded useful and it sounded fun. This program taught me skills such as how to market yourself and how to start up your own business, things you just don't learn in the NHS. I knew that I was good at my job, but I was naive about what I could do outside of that box. I learned that the soft skills I had were in demand and marketable. I hadn't appreciated this before, working in an academic career where knowledge was king and the soft skills weren't really valued. I've just started working as an independent consultant on a six month contract, working remotely part time, and I earn what I did full time in the NHS. But now I have time for travel, relaxing and doing fun things like learning to play guitar. After working long weeks, long days, nights and on call shifts, I think I deserve it. And if I enjoy the life of a freelancer, when this contract ends, I will look for another one because now my future is in my hands. Don't let anybody underestimate you and always believe that you are capable of doing something different even after 35 years in the same job. Don't dismiss the opportunity for personal development as part of leaving work and learn new soft skills like social media. And keep in contact with those colleagues from the old days. You just never know what might turn up. What I love about Anne's story is how she was able to continue to do the work she loved, but use the redundancy as an opportunity to get more freedom, flexibility, and ultimately a better work-life balance. Her commitment to learning how to market herself and her unique skills sounds like it was really empowering to her and ultimately enabled her to get a real sense of just how valuable she was. Next up, we're gonna hear from redundancy mentor and author of why losing your job could be the best thing that ever happened to you, Eleanor Tweddle. We'll hear what Eleanor thinks of Anne's story 
and what advice she'd give to people in similar situations. Eleanor, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so uh, we heard Anne's story. Um, I, I, she talked a lot, didn't she? And it seemed really key, those idea of soft skills. And she really fought and really made that effort to make sure she kind of learned the true value of her soft skills and was able to go out and sell them and push them. What would your advice be to people who maybe aren't sure what their soft skills are or even if they are sure they don't know how to really like grab hold of them and kind of go this is what I can offer and like sell themselves um, because often the soft skills are a bit more intangible aren't they they're, they're not so kind of easy to grasp so yeah what would your advice be to people to really sell their find and sell their soft skills what a force of Anne the force I know, of Anne amazing. amazing completely inspiring I think soft skills are kind of interesting th topic in itself like I could probably talk a long time around well are they even soft like why do we even call them soft there's nothing soft about some of this stuff um some of this stuff we talk about in the soft skill category is actually the difference between make or break success or fail you know it's it's crucial stuff isn't it and, and, and yet we call it sort of like soft skills um so i just love that kind of whole vibe of how important a role it was and how she, she identified that this is what's going to make the difference for me rather than dwelling on well I need a certificate I need a website and it like the tactical stuff that actually people in a similar situation sometimes go down and there's nothing wrong with that we all have to find our own way around but I was just kind of smiling because I definitely did that kind of technical skill side I thought well I want to set up a business so I need to learn how to you know set up a website and spend hours yeah days months <laughs> I don't know still I don't know how much time I'm spending on this stuff but this you think that's what you need but actually that's never going to make the difference like I meet people all the time that have none of that stuff they just are absolute connectors they connect to people they know how to talk to people about what they want to do and uh, they bring in clients in that way because their whole sort of fuel, their energy is what they're focusing on. And this is kind of what I, what I personally kind of read as soft and what's soft about that, you know, the, that whole connection. So that's what I got from it. It was around tune into your energy, not your to-do list. And if you're not putting things out there into the world and connecting with people and telling people your story and what you want to do, it's irrelevant what else is going on in the background. You can have all the certificates in the world, you can have all the experience, all of it. But if you're not getting out there, being brave, making a few mistakes, you know, doing whatever you want to do just to tell people, there's, it's pointless. In Anne's example, she went from kind of pretty much doing a very similar role, same industry, but she moved in the way of working, um, ultimately to be able to work less time for more money, go off and do more nice things, which I love. Uh, but what's, I don't know, is there anything that you'd advise people for how? Because I think we're in school, you know, it's that system, isn't it? Like you go to school, you go to university, and then you get a job for someone else. But that's not the only way of working, you know, self-employed, sole trader, have your own business. I'm sure there's many others. What would your advice be to someone who's like always been employed and that big, scary world of self-employed business is, uh, yeah, how, how do we find the options and then decide what's best for us? Yeah. So first thing is we definitely all have a choice. Every single one of us has a choice of how we make this step and how we make this work for us. And you're right, you know, if we've got that goal of work less, earn more, we've got that choice. We can, why not try and work towards that? Why wouldn't you be trying to work towards that? So in the book, I've got three sort of things that I say is your choice. You've got basically three choices. So you can stick to who you are, um, your skill set, your comfort zone, but because I'm trying to make it the good thing for people, upgrade your circumstances. So it's fine. Some people are absolutely, uh, they are happy with that structure of working for someone else and, and that's what they want. You've done the thinking and you're really clear. No, I really love this job, but upgrade and upgrade it to a degree of, can I get flexible working? Can I work for an organisation that's closer to my values? Can I work closer to home, reduce the commute? You know, it's thinking the next level of, 
right, I'm really comfortable, I love this job, how can I make it even better though? And you're so you're sticking, but you're kind of upgrading what that might look, look like. And I do get a bit of challenge at the moment because people are like, well, that's just unrealistic in the current climate. You know, you, but it's it's not. The jobs are still out there. Someone's got to do them. So if you're really clear on that and you've got kind of organisations that you really, really want to work for, you know, go and start knocking on their door. Go and approach. Go and make them make sure they know who you are and, and start hustling in that direction because they definitely won't know who you are if you just sit and go, well, it's pointless. There's thousands of people. Who, you know, they definitely won't. Yeah. You definitely will not be that person on top of the pile. Mm -hmm. So make the choice of I want this and I'm going to put all my energy into doing it. Okay. So that's stick. Yeah. You might think, well, stick, I don't want to stick. I want to uh, twist. I want to keep to my skill set, what I do well, my experience. I, I kind of like what I'm doing. And this is kind of perhaps what Anne did and how, what she described. I like. I get that I like all these elements, but I want to twist how I do it now. I don't want to work for someone. I want to work for me. But you twist it. You could be teaching others to do what you, you know. You could... Um, be a consultant so like in Anne's example you could be just go and advise people um and do it in a different way you could join agency and you could be sort of you know delivering the same stuff but in a different way back into uh, organizations so having to think about how you twist your sort of experience and your strength that you love you like I really love what I'm doing I just want to deliver it in a different way that's twist so you've got stick twist and then the final choice that you've got is bust and that is you throw everything up in the air and you go, all right, I'm kind of done. I want to reinvent myself completely. Um, I'm going to go and open a cafe on a beach somewhere in a Mediterranean island, who knows where, somehow. This is what I'm going to do. And you throw it all up in the air and then you have to work through then, okay, what's the skills that I need to retrain um, I mean, that's obviously a very extreme example, but people do it all the time. So they might think, actually, I want to retrain to be a nurse. I want to retrain to be a teacher. Um, the military as well take on a lot of people who, you know, maybe retrain. So it's about what are the things that I actually need now to relearn to get me into that space. And then the mindset, all of those three things, stick, twist, bust, to make it the best thing that happens, the best thing that you can do for yourself, all of them need mindset of, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give myself the best chance possible. So I kind of resonated with this story quite a lot because I felt like that was the thought process. Should I stick? Nah, I don't want to. But I kind of don't want to lose this bit. So I'll twist it and I'll retrain and I'll make sure that I know this part to do the best that I can. So that's what I'd kind of say. Have a think about what you want to do. Stick, twist, bust. But always know that you've got that choice. You're in control of that. I like that. Yeah, that, that idea of I got control, exactly like you said. Um, we've all got the power. We just need to kind of take it back sometimes, don't we? This is a great opportunity to. And anything else you kind of noticed in Anne's story that you think is worth kind of bringing up? Yeah, well, I kind of covered it, didn't I? <laughs> I connected with the story because of that, um, you know, that just wanting to do stuff in a different way. And I love the bit about work less, earn more, just you just felt that energy of like, right, stop that. I'm going to really own this and this is going to be my moment. So what I'd say there is I really like that. Um, it's not easy, this stuff, but it's possible. That's what I always feel like. And I bring that up into my work as well. You know, it, none of it's easy, but it's possible. And the reason why it's possible is because there's people already doing it. And she's a great example. Um, and some days it doesn't work out like that at all. So, you know, some days I'm working like endless hours because you're just on, you know, you're on a flow and things are coming to you and opportunities and you don't know when they're going to come along again when you're working for yourself. So you're seizing them. But the next thing you have to do is then take back that control, like what you just said, and say, OK, I'm going to give myself a break, give myself some time. Um, and I think what I sensed as well from this was about boundaries. When you've got yourself into a confident space of, right, I'm doing now, I'm in the place where I know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Setting yourself boundaries of how you're going to deliver that is the key to actually achieving work less, earn more. So the boundaries are, no, I'm not going to jump on a call every two minutes for free consultation. 
um, this is my this is my price. This is how I do it. This is when I'm I only do mornings. Uh, you know, all of that stuff will then help fulfill that that goal. But you again, you have to control that and own it. I'm gonna get put my hands up. I'm not that great at it. I'm constantly jumping on free calls with people and breaking all of my rules because I just can't help it. But you know, if you're really clear on if that's what you want, yep. That is what yeah. you've got to do. You know, if you really want to work less and earn more, you have to set yourself boundaries and live by the boundaries. Otherwise, don't say you're going to want to work less and earn more. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Simple. Good stuff. But yeah, I love, I love the energy. I love the energy of this story. Definitely, definitely. Those clear boundaries, but keep doing what you love. And ultimately, I think that's the thing. If you break your own boundaries, you go, well, maybe I do love it a little bit more and I don't want to work less. Um, which probably says you love what you do. So that's a good place to be in as exactly. well, Exactly, so. <laughs> exactly. You're still in a great place. You should be in a good place, but yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Eleanor, thank you very much. Thank you. That was Eleanor Tweddle, author of Why Losing Your Job Could Be the Best Thing That Ever Happened to You. For more advice, tips and support, including Eleanor's personal story, as well as those featured in her book, check out anotherdoor.co.uk. Thank you for watching When Laid Off, Paid Off, Redundancy Success Stories. I hope you managed to find some hope and inspiration from this episode. I'll see you next time.